Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eat World again, and thanks for taking the time to check out another one of my Battlefield 5 videos. Just remember, if you do like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and also feel free to leave a suggestion in the comments for what you want to see in the next video. Now, in today's video, we're actually going to take a look at another weapon review, this time featuring the M1A1 carbine self-loading rifle for the Assault class. And that's because, well, if you didn't already know yet, Simthic.com has released some very raw weapon stats over on their forums, which I want to get into straight away. With that being said, though, when I say they're raw, I mean they're really raw. And at this stage, they haven't even compiled them into graphs so we can work out stuff like recall patterns. But even so, at least we've got some accurate data now. So let's put it to use in this video and we'll find out a little bit more about the M1 carbine and especially how it works. Okay, so to kick off, the M1 carbine is basically a short, light, semi-automatic rifle that ended service with the US military in 1942. And because of its portability, during the war it was mainly used by paratroopers, vehicle crews and rear echelon troops who couldn't really afford to lug around a full-sized M1 Garand. The other thing that made it great for troops off the front line is that it also fired the 30 carbine round, which was smaller and less powerful than a full-sized 30 odd 6 which in real life, as it does in-game, made it much easier to control and allowed for more rounds in the magazine, obviously at the expense of stopping power. Now, before we get into the stats, I should mention that most SLRs are something like a three-shot kill minimum, but the M1A1 actually only deals 30 damage out to 35 meters, dropping off to 22 at about 75 meters. And so what that means is that it's actually a four-shot kill minimum, but at anything over around 50 meters, you're looking at a five-shot kill, which is a heck of a lot for an SLR. Where it makes up for this is the fact that it's got a rate of fire of 449 RPM, meaning you can pretty much fire this thing as fast as you can click the button on your mouse or controller. But with that being said, it's also only got a base mag size of 16 rounds, meaning that you are going to chew through that pretty quickly, especially if you need to engage multiple targets. Now, obviously compared to something like the Turner SMLE and especially the G43, the M1A1 just isn't really a long range weapon at all. And in all honesty, it's probably got stats that are more in line with an assault rifle, except of course for the fact that it doesn't fire in fully auto, making me wonder why you would want to use this instead. And I mean, sure, if you are a good player, then you are probably going to be more effective with this gun than with an AR, especially at mid-range. But at close range, and like I said, especially at long range, unless your accuracy is 100% bang on and you're landing headshots, there are quite a few other weapons that are going to get the better of you. So bearing that in mind, you'll see pretty much all the time in this video, I'm just running a one-time sight because that's more than enough for targets out to 50 meters. And I think the general rule that I was following because of this was if the target is too far away to hit with a one-time sight, then it's probably just too far away for this gun in general. Like I said though, the one saving grace of this gun is the headshot modifier. And so I was even told by a few people that if you chuck on a three time scope and specifically go for headshots, then you'll have a better time. And considering how easy this gun is to control, I can see that working. But once again, apart from the box magazines, it just makes me wonder if a gun like the Turner wouldn't be better for that sort of gameplay in general. Now, as for specializations, well, this one is pretty easy because you'll definitely want to try and maximize your ability in close to mid-range where the M1 is most effective. And honestly, the easiest way to do this is to pick quick aim at the top and then just to run down the left-hand side of the tree, which most importantly hits extended mags for almost double the ammo capacity. On the other hand though, if you do for some reason want to try and go for longer range targets, then I'd recommend going down the right hand side of the tree instead. But with that being said, as you'll notice on the last option, I actually picked enhanced grips because I think being able to hip fire with this gun is a huge advantage, especially if you're going to be using a longer range scope. 
But finally, to finish up, as for my top tips for this gun, well, like I said before, it's not rocket science. Just make sure you're not trying to counter snipe people at super long ranges. Because, I mean, unless you're hitting headshots consistently, all they're going to do is just duck behind a rock and heal up before you can land those five shots, and you'll have wasted half a mag's worth of ammo. On the other hand, don't be afraid to move up with your squad, because, I mean, after all, this is an aggressive SLR, and you'll want to move closer to the action to be effective. So, in other words, just treat it like it's an AR that makes your finger hurt, which, at times, makes you want to laugh, and at other times, makes you want to alt F4. But anyway, guys, I guess that just about wraps up this review. So as always, make sure you let me know what you think of the M1A1 in the comment section down below. And I mean, come on, I know a lot of you guys are fans of this gun out there. So if you think I've got anything wrong in this video, make sure you let me know because I'd love to read that sort of stuff as well. As always, though, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to see any more of these videos. And also, don't forget, you can find my Twitter and Discord links down there as well if you want to keep in touch. And as always, until next time, see you later, and have a good one.